Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on decimals and how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals. So, our objectives today are just that, that you will add, subtract, multiply, and divide. The essential question I want you thinking about today as I proceed through this lesson is what do adding and subtracting decimals have in common? And then, how do multiplication and division with decimals differ? So we're looking for commonalities and differences. Now, our lesson today is intended to be review from a grade seven student as they get ready to add and subtract and multiply and divide positive and negative decimals. So if you're looking for a really solid review on the four operations, you're in the right place. Let's begin by learning and reviewing how to add decimals. Today, when we're gonna add decimals, we're gonna first line up the decimals. So we're gonna line up the decimal point. Then we're gonna add zeros for placeholders if necessary. And then we are gonna add from the right to the left, which is unlike a lot of orderly things we do in math. So all of these things are really best practice in how we set up our work. So here is an example. I have 0 0.9 or red 9 tenths add 6.07 or 6 and 7 hundredths. So the first thing we're gonna do is set these up vertically and line up the decimal point. So I have 0 0.9 and I'm gonna add 6.07. Now, com uh, addition is commutative. So the order of these doesn't matter. You could have put 6.07 on top. It won't change the outcome. Now I'm gonna add in this filler zero here so that all my digits line up. All right, now we're going to add 0 plus 7 is 7, 9 plus 0 is 9, bring down your decimal point, and then add 0 plus 6, which is 6. So my solution is 6.97 or 6 and 97 hundredths. Now it's your turn. I would like you to follow that procedure. Please pause. Try this one on your own and come back and hit play to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm gonna start by writing my first value, line up my second value using the decimal point, see my decimal points lined up, and I'm gonna fill in my empty spaces with zeros. Now I'm ready to add. One plus zero is one, four plus zero is four, three plus five is eight, Bring down your decimal point. Eight plus seven is 15. So I'm gonna put the five and carry the one. One plus two is three, plus three is six. So there you have it. There's your answer, 65 and 841 thousandths, or 65.841. Let's move on to reviewing how to subtract decimals. So here we go. We're gonna line up our decimals just like we did with addition. So there's our commonality. Adding and subtracting decimals is the same because we're gonna line up our decimal points. Subtracting though, the order in which you set it up matters. We're gonna add zeros for placeholders just like when we add, and then we are gonna subtract from right to left. And if necessary, we may need to borrow or regroup. So again, this is the same rule as adding. The only difference is the order of our numbers matter. We couldn't start with 2.004 because it's 25.36 subtract. So we're gonna start with our first value and we're gonna subtract our second, lining up the decimal point. Now I have to fill in this one digit with a zero. So notice that they have each have three decimal places. So they're each out to the thousandth. So even though the zero is something in math we refer to as an insignificant digit, we need it in order to subtract. So now I'm gonna subtract four from zero. Well, we all know that we can't take four away from nothing. So I'm gonna go to my six and I'm gonna cross it out and borrow from it. I'm gonna make it five and add a one, making this 10. So 10 subtract four is six. 5 subtract 0 is 5, 3 subtract 0 is 3, bring down your decimal point, 5 subtract 2 is 3, and 2 subtract 0 is 2. 
And there you have it, 23.356, or 23 and 356 thousandths. So once again, we're going to have you practice. I would like you to pause, show your work, then come back and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Good luck. Welcome back. I hope you started with 27.9. Line, we're going to subtract, lining up our decimal point, and then I have my zeros to fill in, and I'm ready to go. Well, I cannot take 5 away from 0. I can't borrow from 0, so I'm going to go to my 9, cross it out, make it 8, and then I've got to change this 0 to a 10, and then I'm going to borrow from my 10, and I'm going to add my 1 here so that I have 10. So 10 subtract 5 is 5, 9 subtract 0 is 9, 8 subtract 8 is 0, bring down the decimal point, 7 subtract 0 is 7, 2 subtract 0 is 2. There you have it, your answer, 27 and 95 thousandths, or 27.095. Now this may look difficult, but if you do it one step at a time, you just completely go until you can borrow, borrow a 1, add it to there, make it a 10, cross it out, borrow a 1 so this becomes 9, and add it. Now we're ready to move on and review multiplying decimals. So we're going to discover how they're different. To multiply decimals, we're going to line up the digits, not the decimal point. So when we multiply and when we divide, we're not going to pay attention to lining up decimal points. We're going to line up digits. We're going to place the factor with the most decimal places on top and multiply as I would whole numbers. Then we're going to, when we're done multiplying, we're going to count the number of decimal places in the factors, so in both values, and place the decimal point in the product, the answer, to have the same number of decimal places. So once again, this may seem like a lot. If it were me, I would write some of these down, but watch on the next problem as I model it. So here's what all that means. I'm going to take my first value, my largest value, 9.04. I'm going to line up my 2.7. So I'm going to do this because I have three digits in this number and only two. Now I'm ready to set this up. So four times seven, we're gonna multiply 28. I put my eight and carry my two. So there's my 28. Seven times zero is zero, plus two is two. Seven times nine is 63. Seeing as this is my last digit, I'm just going to put both digits here. I don't need to carry. So this, remember, we start on the right. We did 7 times 9.04. 7 times 4, then 7 times 0, adding the 2, 7 times 9. Now I'm going to put a 0 as a placeholder because I need to shift to the left one digit to start my next row. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 0 is 0. Remember that 2 was for the first row. 2 times 9 is 18. And now I'm ready to add. Starting at the right, 8 plus 0 is 8. 2 plus 8 is 10, so 0 and carry the 1. 1 plus 3 plus 0 is 4. And then 6 plus 8 is 14 carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So now this is my product, but I need to place my decimal point. So 9.04 and 2.7 are our factors. So when you are multiplying, the numbers you're multiplying are called factors, and the answer is called your product. So I count my decimal points in the first factor, which is 2, and my decimal places in the second factor, which is one. So I have a total of one, two, three digits in the after the decimals. So that means I need to come over here and place my decimal point three digits from the right. So my decimal point goes there, and now my product is 24.408.
your turn. See if you can model those steps and find success, multiplying these factors and finding the product. Please pause and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So we're going to start with 6.109. That's our factor with the most decimal places, the most digits. And we're going to multiply by 8.4. And now I'm ready to start. 4 times 9 is 36, so I'm going to put the 6, carry the 3. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So that's my first row. Before I start multiplying my second row, I need to put a 0 to line up. So now I'm doing 8 times 9 which is 72. So I'm going to put my one digit, two here, and I need to bring my seven up. So this is my second row of numbers. Eight times zero is zero, plus seven is seven. Eight times one is eight. Eight times six is 48. Now I can draw my line and I'm going to add all my digits. You can see that it's going to be very important to really show your work lining up your digits. 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus 7 is 11, so I need my 1 and carry a 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 8 is 13. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 8 is 11, carry the 1, and 1 plus 4 is 5. Now I need to go and find out where to put my decimal point. So I count my de decimal places. There's 3, 1, 2, 3, and then a fourth. So I have four digits beyond the decimal point. It means I need to come back to my product, my answer, and put my decimal point four digits from the right, which is right there, giving me a product of these two factors of 51.3156. Now let's review dividing with decimals. So to divide decimals, we're going to set up long division. The first value or dividend goes inside the long division symbol, and the second value or the divisor goes outside. So first, inside, second, outside. Then, if the divisor outside is a decimal value, we're going to count the number of decimal places and move the decimal point to the end. We'll move the decimal point of the dividend inside the same number. We're going to use the new decimal point of the dividend inside and place another decimal point straight up for the quotient or our answer. And we're going to divide as we would with whole numbers. So we always divide as we would with whole numbers. Let's set this up together. So our first value goes inside because this is 3.8 divided by 0 0.6. Sometimes I think it really helps to say it out loud. So instead of trying to remember what goes inside or what doesn't, actually state the problem. 3.8 divided by 0 0.16. So then it makes more sense. This is being divided by that. I added a bunch of extra zeros here just in case I need them. Our second step is to look at our decimal point. We need to make this divisor a whole number in order to divide. That means I need to move the decimal point two digits. If I move this decimal point two spaces, I need to move this decimal place two spaces. You must do the same to both. So I'm going to move over here to the right so that you can see what happens. I moved it and made the 16, and then I had to move it from between the 3 and the 8 over here to buy the 0. The next part of setting this up is this decimal point has to go straight up to our answer, which is our quotient. So now I'm ready to start, and I'm going to ask myself, 16 does not go into 3, but it goes into 38. 16 goes into 38 two times. 2 times 16 is 32. Now you're going to subtract 38, subtract 32 is 6. Then we're going to bring down our 0 because 16 does not go into 6. 
bring down the zero. 16 goes into 60 three times. 3 times 16 is 48. We're going to subtract again, and we get 12. 60 subtract 48 is 12. So I still have a remainder, so I'm going to bring down my next zero. 16 goes into 120 seven times. 7 times 16 is 112. Now I'm going to subtract. 120 minus 112 is 8. Still a remainder, so I need to bring down my zero. 16 goes into 80 five times. 5 times 16 is exactly 80. And there I have it, a remainder of zero, so I know I'm finished. You know you're done when you get your remainder of zero. So 23.75 is my quotient. And if you've done all the work setting it up correctly, you don't need to even think at the end about your decimal point. It's all there for you. Your turn. Please set this up, divide, and come back to check your quotient. Welcome back. So we're going to set this up, 34.2 divided by 3.8. Notice I added some zeros just in case I need them. I have to move this one space to the right, so that means I need to move this decimal one space to the right. So let's look at what that looks like. So now I have my whole number, and then my decimal point is now after the two. Let's bring our decimal point up. So we're ready for our quotient. So 38 does not go into 34. So I'm instantly going over to 342. Now I know that 38 times 9 is 342. You might have had to do a little side work over here to figure that out. 9 times 38 is 342 exactly. So I already have my remainder of 0. So even though I had all these digits here, all these zeros waiting to go, I don't need them and it's okay. So my solution, or my quotient, is 9. So there you have it. Those are the rules for adding, subtracting, and multiplying and dividing decimals. I hope it was a good review for you and you feel more confident as you go to do your own work. Thank you for joining me at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up or a comment. Have a great day.